Hey, welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huyen Dao, and I'm speaking with... Christopher Jenkins. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right, so how, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? So I'm currently based in London, uh, working in Moorgate at the moment. Um, how I got started in Android, um, so in my final year of uni, I kind of had a final year project, and I'm kind of free to do whatever we want, and I was kind of deciding, do I want to do kind of something a bit kind of webby or like java -y or something kind of, I don't know, I had a free free reign, so I kind of, Android was kind of at 2.1 by that point in time, and it was kind of a bit more established. I thought, I'm just going to do that, you know, like, why not? You know, it's a funnier project, I can do what I want. So kind of at the end, I kind of funnier project, I kind of developed the system, which was based on our Cisco white paper, where we could actually, where they were trying to do room, they're trying to detect where devices were in rooms internally. Oh, cool. nice. Um, and Cisco would do it with this like this really complicated hardware routers and Wi-Fi points, so mm. they knew exactly where everything was. I went, well, I don't have the money to do that, so I kind of designed <laughs> a system which was that the devices would pick up. You just kind of you walk through a house, you would, you kind of detect all the Wi-Fi points, and it kind of make a, a heat map of where they were. Oh, nice. And it got it was accurate to about ten meters, so you know, it sort of worked. It, yeah, and that, and that's kind of it. And then from there onwards, I kind of like. Uh, decided, do I, want for Java, do I want to work for a Java company or do I want to work for like a mobile agency? And, mm -hmm. and the, the choice was pretty clear back then, back in, what was it, 2011, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah it, was, yeah, it was good fun. And that's kind of there on inwards. From, and now I'm working for a startup. So. Excellent. OK, so I, I'm actually really glad to have Chris on the show because I use a little library that he wrote called Calligraphy. And I feel like, you know, We've all been kind of, as under developers, we struggle with custom fonts. Kind of maybe sometimes if you want to have like a really cute little font in your app, or more particularly, because you know back in the time before you know Hollow, there was Droid Sans, and then at some point we got Roboto, and you know Roboto kind of came in at 4.0, right? And and you know like a lot of us were still struggling with well, we want our apps to look like the new sexy, but how do we get this font in here, and you actually came up with a really brilliant idea that kind of saved the rest of us from doing a lot of the same thing. So why don't you tell us a little more about calligraphy and, and how it came to be? Sure. Yeah, so as, as I said, like everyone working in an agency, I, we did the custom view implementation, all these weird kind of hacks to try and do custom text. And then a couple of, and then two years down the line, once I left the agency, started working for a startup, I was talking with some friends about the uh, kind of like, hey guys, you're like, how often do you guys do this? And it's like every, every single time, there all these kind of custom stuff. So we were kind of talking, and I think like one night I went home and went, do you know what? I think I can kind of intercept the way views are created and actually just scan the attributes. Oh wow! And pull off yeah. uh, pull, a, pull off a custom attribute as it's going through the layer inflation chain, um, and then set the wow. typeface based off the attribute. Now that sounds like really easy. Um, well, actually, that sounds kind of hard to well, me. <laughs> well, the con the, what I first thought of, though, oh, it'd be easy. You know, I'll just override the layer on Flater and I'll mm -hmm. just um, I'll just intercept on the view created. Mm, okay. Yeah. It's not because yeah. <laughs> um, well, there's a couple of reasons why it's not. So Google, the layout layout Flater actually has very loads of private and final methods mm. which you can't override. Mm -hmm. um, and you actually the the layout Flater that the uh, devices use is something called the phone layout Flater. Now that's a hidden API class, so you can't actually you can't actually um, uh, instantiate that. So if you uh, if you extend the layout inflator yourself um, without using the phone layout inflator, you, mm -hmm. no no views ever inflate. You actually every single view you try to inflate will crash. So the weird so the, what happens is when you kind of when the phone layout inflator kind of goes through its uh, kind of traverse in the XML tree. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes through these kind of four stages. So it kind of have this set factory one or two, which is uh, kind of the ones that you can, is the composable uh, callback that you can put on your layout flight yourself. Mm -hmm. So the way it happens, it kind of hits those two first, then has a private factory method, mm -hmm. which is basically factory two, which okay. is normally gets attached to the activity or say a fragment, and then again, that's a private final method, so you don't have that. You can't set that yourself. Right. Yeah. So that was that was like kind of these are all these hurdles coming along, uh, and then there's the final one, which is this thing called kind of create view, which again is uh, hidden. Again, so it's private. So there's these four methods, and you can only have access to two of them. So when I kind of did this initial implementation, I thought, okay, you know what? I'll just override the set factory one or two, mm -hmm. uh, which is the, the, a public API. Um, that didn't really work because. Well, it did work. So Clickery 1.0 actually did that. And then oh. and that worked for, I guess it was probably working for like a year or so. Mm -hmm. And then um, kind of later down the line, people were going like, oh, actually, it's not working with inflating fragments. It's not working with all these other things as well. I was like, well, why is it not working these things? And because what the Google engineers have done with, uh, was it the activity 
diaphragm activity mm -hmm. was they actually intercept it and set the um, they actually have, they override the on activity uh, the on create view mm -hmm. on the activity which is the private factory Ooh, method yeah so if I was inf I inflated everything this kind of this uh, this set factory level level mm -hmm. and then never got never went down the chain so then fragments never got created because I wasn't handling how fragments got created Ooh. so it's kind of like <laughs> how am I going to do this now then because I have to kind of like hook into all these different methods right. so that's kind of when calligraphy 2 was born mm -hmm. and it actually wasn't it wasn't just my idea I think I was talking I think I, I was playing around with some like concepts for a while and I think it was Dan Lu and someone else mm -hmm. I can't remember his name but he is credited on the um, the GitHub repository. Okay. Um, so we kind of went through this kind of uh, kind of we create a layout inflator. We kind of steal the internal workings of the phone layout inflator, mm -hmm. and that's kind of internal method of the calligraphy layout inflator. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of when you set those two factory methods, mm -hmm. if you set them, we'll kind of wrap them and imp and then kind of we have callbacks and we'll pass it back through. Mm -hmm. So basically everything is basically everything you set on the layout inflator we wrap. Um, and then on instantiation, on the, on the first time you inflate a view, it actually calls through reflection to set the private factory method on the layout inflator, which is actually optional. You can configure it on and off if you don't want to use reflection. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then it gets a bit weird from there onwards because to, because we can't call this kind of on create view, which is like an internal method. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this at the end of, there's that, that kind of funnel chain we emulate. Um, but because they do this weird inter workings with internal APIs, where they actually they'll take these constructor arguments um, and then store them into a field in the layout inflator, change them, and then call a method, which is then and a field's reference inside this private method. Mm -hmm. So we have to to actually call that method from calligraphy. We have to reflectively get these constructor arguments, mm -hmm. set it to the other set it to a different context. Then call this method and then set it back again. So basically, mm -hmm. we're kind of we're kind of mocking what happens underneath, mm -hmm. and this would all be kind of solved if they kind of let us um, <laughs> and made it a bit more um, um, abstract. Um, so yeah, so there's kind of all the, yeah, it's it is really complicated. I did write a blog post on it. Um, so yeah, so that, yeah, how it works now. So it kind of it goes through those things. Uh, then so yeah, so it kind of goes all through those, all those things, and then every single time those. Each one of those steps, actually, there's a wrap around one of them, mm -hmm. and they get called back into what mm -hmm. we call the calligraphy factory wrapper, I think we call it, um, which is then got kind of a, a kind of a switch statement of if it's a text view, mm -hmm. pull off the attributes, gotcha, yeah, and then which is the font type, uh, mm -hmm. and then work out how to pull off those things, and mm -hmm. not not in the sense of just pull off an attribute of the text view. We can actually pull off the we actually will work out if it's a style, right, or a text right. appearance. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like the same way styles work in Android, so mm -hmm. you can actually, it's a hierarchical. Mm -hmm. um, and, but then it gets weirder again because we've got things like the toolbar, API, the toolbar API, where actually they inflate the text, the title text views after the views instantiated. Right, yeah. So it goes through the layout inflator, the mm -hmm. toolbar gets created, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, and then we have to kind of, we add a, what was it, view on tree listener. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then wait for that. Wait for the kind of the global callback, and then we run it again across those two text oh my views. Goodness. Yeah, and then we have to look up, and then we have to look at the stars for is it Android dot R dots, uh, mm -hmm. like title styles and like that. So yeah, there's all, there's all these really weird so, hacks so, and so stuff. So there's basically a lot going on, but yeah. like the end result is that basically as like us using calligraphy, we we have to do very little. Um, yeah. And and the kind of like, the thing that kind of always bugged me about using other solutions is that you always end up like doing something like in Java or having to do all this kind of like bootstrapping, I guess, in a sense of all the fonts and stuff yourself. Whereas with, with you, because you're you kind of like taking all care of all that yeah. hard stuff for us, we can, you can use calligraphy in a very natural way. And it integrates really well with styling, yeah. with attributes. I mean, and there's very little that you can do, that you have to do yourself to get it to work and to bring these custom fonts into something. What's like the biggest challenge for you in trying to keep up with? I mean, is it just more like, OK, a new thing came out in the in the, the app design, app design library? You know, like yeah, yeah, that is that is the hardest part because they when they went f when they brought out the new app compat design library, they changed it from the action bar to toolbar. Mm. They started setting their own, they started setting their own factory mm -hmm. on the layout inflator, mm -hmm. and it broke everything. So, <laughs> um, so there's like there's like the two point zero, then there's a two point zero one which came out after like forty eight hours of hard work trying to work out what they were doing because this this wasn't public mm -hmm. API at that point, mm -hmm. or pub the the code wasn't open source by that point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's keeping up with that and. It, 
I kind of try not to do too much now. Yeah, um, <laughs> I can understand why. Because it's, yeah, and um, there's lots, of, I mean, there are stuff open that I keep mm-hmm. debating about doing, and the, kind of the mm-hmm. next stage, I guess, is what I've kind of, when I find the time, is that it's probably going to break calligraphy out into it's kind of a, the front part, which is the pulling of tributes off, and sure. then the, mm-hmm. that's going to, that's and then the layout later part, which is kind of, of watching views mm-hmm. is going to become a different library. Mm-hmm. So what happened eventually is that you can then compose all these different injections into the layout later flow. Oh. So say if you have got your own custom view way of doing things which people want to do where mm-hmm. they'll reflectively find set typeface on mm-hmm. any view. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that in calligraphy, but say if you want to write your own plugin, that's fine, you can do that. And that's oh, kind of the, going to be the next cool. phase of Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Nice. When I find time to do it. When you it, find yeah. time to do it. <laughs> As everyone says, you know. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, that sounds fantastic. And well, I just, you know, like, um, so definitely, like, if you're, like, working on custom, cu- custom fonts, or even if you're trying to support, you know, like, older versions of Android, and you you kind of want a consistent, like, design, uh, especially kind of adhering to material designs, you should definitely check out calligraphy, because it's great. Um, Thank you so much, Chris, right. for like taking us through the journey of calligraphy. Yeah. Um, if people can, fi- for, if you want to find you on the internet, uh, where can they do that? Uh, yeah, so Twitter's at Chris Jenks, GitHub's at Chris Jenks. That's uh, Jenks with an X, not a KS. Um, yeah, I think you just type Chris Jenks and I come up for pretty much everything on Google. So uh, that's, that's probably the best way. Awesome, and um, we'll definitely link to calligraphy as well in the show notes. Um, so thank you so much, Chris. Cheers, thanks for having me. And thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.